Hello, so glad you joined us for Hot Indonesia, the instant remedy for insomnia. And I mean, they're satisfied, not sleepy. Oh, okay. satisfied. Yeah, I'm Dalton Tanaraka <laughs> in Jakarta. Here is this week's HI Hot List. Freedom to offend. How far should the media go after Charlie Hebdo? Is it okay for taxpayers to subsidize for the pilgrimage to Mecca? And why a mountain is off limits for love in central Java? Uh, every week, I am so blessed to be in the same room with two women I enjoy very much. Rahayu Saraswati, Sarah, um, is a first-year parliament member who actually ventures into her district after the election. And Yeni Wahid is director of the Wahid Institute, daughter of the fourth president of Indonesia, and people connector. She likes to bring people Ooh. together. That's a good is that, thing. Is that your personal? No, that's Ooh. on her uh, okay. Twitter page. I'm a party organizer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not political either. Hot topic. Yeah, I was going to say, which party? Political Hot topic party. number one, freedom to offend. The lines were long in Paris with people waiting to buy the first edition of Charlie Hebdo. This after the January 7 attack that killed 12 people. A few days earlier, millions had marched in support of the French publication's right to publish what it wanted. The dead gunmen in the office shootings were said to have been retaliating for offensive portrayals of Islam's prophet in the satirical weekly. The U.S. had come out this past week in support of the publication of Freedom of Expression, but an Egyptian media outlet warned against more images, publishing more images of Muhammad, saying it would make things worse. Um, the uh, Nadlatul Ulama, Indonesia's largest Muslim organization, came out also saying, warned against publishing more um, caricatures or images of Muhammad, which some say is stated should not be done in the Quran. Some say it, it's, it's okay. Ladies, weigh in on this. Oh, can, well, the end, you're also condemning the violence and the... Yeah. Of course, the everyone condemns yeah. the violence. Yeah. I don't think anyone says we support the violence. Yeah. Okay, go. Cool. Right. right, sorry. Um, I, I just would like to say something first before uh, you only because, first of all, as a neutral party, um, even though I am not part of the Muslim community. You're not neutral. You have feelings, but I you're do, just not Muslim. You're just not Muslim. Not Muslim. Yeah, that's, okay. that's what I mean. I, I, I'm, I'm a third party, I guess you would yeah. say. Um, having friends and families who, who are, I mean, I'm still involved, you know, emotionally. I mean, it's not something that we can stand back from and say, oh, we're not a part of that. I mean, we all, we're all a part of what happens to a community. And, mm. and in, the, in this case, I have friends and families who are Muslims. And number one, Definitely do not support the use of violence to convey a message. I think it's definitely the wrong way. If the end goal is to get people to understand your point of view, that's not the way to do it. I mean, it just creates more hatred. It does not create compassion towards the Muslim community, and that's one of the one of the things that one of the activists uh, for human rights and 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 tolerance in in France actually said, which is you know this almost creates a. Muslim phobia, mm -hmm. Islamophobia, Islam they called it. Yeah. And then uh, number two, uh, I, I think that at the same time, I do have to say, after looking at what happened, you know, I was shocked to see people were posting. This was before I even found out what happened. People were posting Jishri Sarli and everything. And and then I, 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 I looked at the pictures that were publicized. Um, my husband showed them to me, and I just thought they were yeah, they're, absolutely they're I mean, crude, very crude, showing the vulgar, prophet in rude. poses I, with. I would you know. not, I would not support that yeah. kind of free speech, Dalton. I don't know if there should be a line. Obviously, it should not be. Well, that's you know, that's what it we're, should not be. That's what we're talking about today. By, should there be a line? Now, Yeni, yeah. as a former journalist, I think we both would defend the right to right of freedom of expression. Of course, but is there a limit? And I think. We would argue maybe yes, there should be a limit. The limit is the you know again the hate speech. Where do you draw a limit between you know freedom of speech and also um, uh, you know uh, hate speech? Uh, uh, you know you're expressing your views in such a way that it, it incites uh, that insults incites hate, insults yeah. and also incites uh, such a strong feelings among mm. some communities right. without you know. Uh, and that's what they were trying to do, provoke, you know, some reaction in, in, in their audience. Now, they were a very small weekly publication. They were, they were like four to 6,000 copies. Now they're in the millions because of this. Mm -hmm. if, if people who were outraged by this had let it pass, no one would ever know about it, known about it, and it would have gone unnoticed and there would be no violence. But Actually, I mean, no. Actually, the, the, those, those, um, the issues about, about not just Charlie Hebdo, but all those publications that have been very offensive have actually come through our radar. Especially in I'm sure there are some Muslim that have published images that it doesn't like provoke, but that, you know it's a high-profile. Let me, you know, 
the point, I guess, is a newspaper or any medium has the right to publish what it wants, but um, if it wants to draw a racist character, caricature, a stereotype that's really crude, um, but should you? You can, but should you? As a well, news, who, whose responsibility is that? As the, a news the, manager, the, yeah. you have to weigh the responsibility. Right. Yeah. Should the, I publish the mainstream, Some mainstream media, the New York Times and all that, and they decided not to republish the cartoons because they to show what caused the to problem. To show what caused the problem because I mean, and of course we can argue that we we, we know that they are you know for uh, stand for uh, freedom of speech, but the reason for that is because they 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 draw a line themselves, like you said. There's a uh, 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 self-filtering, you know, of what uh, what they think can, you know, can be needlessly provocative. And that's and, not and, censorship. And, and that's not censorship because they made the decision, right? So, yes. So that's yeah, well, okay in, in my mind. In, in a way, it is almost like self-censorship. You know, you do want to, you, you look at, okay, this, we don't need to show that. You know, okay, this. And you're not saying that's, that's a bad okay. thing. That's, no, no, yeah. I, that's exactly. Actually, I wrote on, on my Facebook page, I, I, I said that this is what I fear that's happening in Indonesia, um, t not to so much to do with you know the vulgar and, and all of that, but simply because there's almost no limit to the freedom of speech. It's almost so liberal that it's almost being used for propaganda as well. And it's so it's so easy when the people are not as highly educated in as as communities maybe in France or in America. It's it's very difficult to ascertain which 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 publication is speaking the truth and which one is driving things towards a, a certain propaganda. Yeah, and this this publication was not known for being a, a top notch or particularly sharp or right. really great satirical publication. It was just I, I middle mean, of the road. Get, we, we get satire. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's fine. I mean, you can mock uh, Muslims, you can mock Islam. It's fine. Just find something that is less offensive and less less um, less sacred to Muslims. Now, what happens if an Indonesian publication had done this? It would not have happened here because even with a moderate Muslim majority, um, recently you, you read the Jakarta Post editor was sent to the, was uh, reported to the police because they had published a cartoon with criticizing ISIS. Uh, I mean, right. talk about I mean uh, taking a good stand, but he was still reported because he showed an image of Islam, blah blah blah. So that could not have happened here because people would get reported to the police if, we, if somebody published anywhere close to an image of Muhammad. Correct? Yes. I mean, well, in Islam, you know, the thing is, in Islam, it's just the the sheer public uh, depiction of the most uh, of the prophet is blasphemous. Let alone a satirical or offensive uh, depiction of the prophet. Can yeah. you imagine? I mean, this is. This is maybe the world doesn't understand this, but it's something that is held very sacred. And this is where, uh, you know, you don't, it's like with the yes, African Americans. Um, they make fun of themselves, people make fun of them sometimes, but you don't, you refrain yourself from using certain languages, certain, yes. certain words. And because, you know, there is that. That, and that, yet the people here in Indonesia would not necessarily understand that unless you actually have lived there and people have told you that it's not okay to say certain words and it's it, and there's the you know the racism car the racism issue and all of that I mean this is a culture as well I mean if you want to be able to respect other people I think part of the process is about understanding where the other person yeah I think there are two sides of this coming, story now in, in, in the days that follow okay hot Indo will continue shortly should the government be paying for Hajj trips to Mecca? You're watching Hot Indo with Sarah, Yenny, and me. Here is hot topic number two, all expenses paid. For the first time ever, the Jakarta government is paying the bill for Muslims to make the spiritual pilgrimage to Mecca. Specifically, 30 mosque keepers left for Saudi Arabia on Thursday for Umrah, which is one step below the obligatory Hajj. Governor Basuki Pranama said the men deserve to go because of their service and financial situation. All had to meet certain uh, requirements, of course, um, such as being more than 40 years old, worked in a mosque more than 10 years, and could read the Quran and other steps. A very nice move by Governor Ahok. Absolutely. I think this shows, uh, you know, it's kind of like a, I would like to say it's a slap in the face for all those who think that he is uh, intolerant or any of that. I mean, none of us who are educated enough to, to know that 
would think that he was intolerant. It, it simply was just doing his job. And unfortunately, it's the issue that I think we always bring up here. It's the way he communicates. That's always been mm. a slight problem. So very I direct. think, yes, he's very direct, which is not very Eastern culture, mm. you know. So I think that's always been the problem. In this case, I mean, he really is just showing that he's supportive of any of any religion, of any faith. And, uh, you know, I think it it's a good step. Let me be the reporter. And he's done it. He's done it before here. This is what I. This is what needs to be. I didn't know that. This is what needs to be he's pressed done on. And he's that, done that, it before in his question previous position. The use, I question mm -hmm. the use of um, of the state's money Ooh. to fund. You're questioning the use okay. of the, the city's money okay. be because you're right. You know, maybe it costs. I, I kind of calculate maybe about fifty thousand dollars. You know, for airfare and, and lodging or so. But yes, if a government leader, Sarah, if a government leader to Yanni's point, sent 30 pastors to Bethlehem at city expense, there would be screaming. There would be criticism. I'm not sure. I, I, I wonder, but I, I, I'm, I wonder, but I'm not sure. But your point, Yanni, was the it, government should not be in the business of sponsoring one religion's groups uh, no, or trips. No, I don't think so. I don't th well, although in Indonesia, I mean, and, and religious groups do get money, do get funding from the government through, uh, we said, Directorate uh, General for all the, for all the, uh, all the, uh, Official, official, uh, official religions, you know, but um, still, I mean, uh, what happens to other religions that do not belong to these six uh, religions that are supposed to be acknowledged by the government? They could complain. even if there's no no more. I mean, the um, uh, constitutional court now says that uh, there is no more term uh, acknowledged or not acknowledged or official or not official. So it means that uh, you know there are many many um, implications to that. Uh, well, very always. very good point. So let me ask you this, ladies: Could politics be at all involved? And I hate to be the, the cynic in this because the most hardline Muslim groups. Yeah, have you're been, usually the most positive in the group. They've, hey. been, they've been protesting okay. Ahok's uh, governorship because he is Christian. Could yeah. could he have done this to just kind of? Yeah, ease the, but the, that's, the that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. interesting that I've actually read in articles that he's done it before. Okay, so, so it's not like a one-off thing, which is, you know, what we would like, you know, what we would think as cynics, we would look at it and be like, oh, he's just trying to balance it mm -hmm. off. But he's done Buying it before. And by <laughs> sympathy. <laughs> sympathy. Yeah. But, but he's done it before, number one. And number two, um, talking about the budget, apparently there's a bureau that handles this, that actually they, they do have uh, some budget to send um, mosque officials. So it's, or, not, it's not decided by him, but it could be it, decided by actually, the parliament. Yes, but he's the person that actually did it. He, well, well. He's, he's, he probably publicly, he's the one who's pushing this forward. I mean, I think we need to do some research, first of all, whether uh, previous well, governors I, I'm have sure done it. That but he's done it in previous No, if previous uh, governors did it, I'm sure they would have publicized it because it's a very positive, media-friendly move, and, but, and no I mean, one has. Well, the thing is, before 2009, 2014 elections, it wasn't it, like the use of media and especially social media wasn't as strong as it is now. Well, the, the social was in the papers. We know, can assume that the previous governor also did it. But uh, you know, for me, um, the question of using the state uh, state funds aside, I think also uh, you know this this uh, these mosque keepers they're not uh, well paid and all that. And in the context of making sure that mosques are not being controlled by the radicals. I think this is also a political move that is not just intended to mm. be, um, just to, to get the, the, the vote from the from the Muslims, but also to make sure that the doors there's tolerance that the keepers of the mosques mosque remain tolerant. Well, so right. I think right. if, in that sense, right. if, if that is the intention, I applaud the move. Yeah. Right, and they're, you know the men themselves are overjoyed because when they were told they were picked to be among this group. You know, many wept because they didn't have the money, they and they've been working they for. Yeah. Well. Yes, it's very true. Yes. And, and I so think it's a good was, thing. It's a good thing. For and them. I think it was a very good point is that he insists that those who have gone before give uh, space and their you know t t chance for the the others who have not been able. Well, to one of the cri uh, criterion was that they couldn't have gone before. Yes, yeah. exactly. So I think that's a very good point um, because a lot of the issues, especially in my commission, when we talk about the Hajj or the Umrah. Um, is is about the quota and, mm -hmm. and about how a lot of people literally have to wait 15 yeah, 20 years. Yeah, and some years. have gone that's, three that's, or four times because how, they can yes, afford exactly, it, and that's not exactly. fair. So what the governor should do then going forward is, 
get re if he gets requests from other religions, he has to also help them. But this is not just a religion. Actually, Ahok has been taken um, an out of box, out of the box uh, approaches to many things. For example, like giving out, you know, when he tried to move people from the slum areas into the high buildings, and they couldn't. They said that they complained. There's no TVs. There's nothing. So he reached out to business people and said, "Look." You have uh, you you can donate your uh, social you know CSR uh, funding money to go to these uh, uh, programs directly. Give you them know, TV so sets, give them TV sets, whatever. bats, okay. blah blah blah. So this is not the first time that uh, you know that that wasn't even the use of uh, state funding, state money. That was and, CSR and from companies, yeah. you, right? But you know, um, he is someone that can think out of the box and 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 who get it done. So let's, let's give him credit then. Let's yeah. say that this was a good thing and all the political stuff, I uh, forget it. Well, you know, the ho our hopes, holidays, I think our hopes here is the same, that if, it's, if it is, you know, a, a move towards making sure there's tolerance and all that, I think, you know, obviously it should be the same throughout with all the other religions that are um, acknowledged here in Indonesia. And hopefully there will be more conversations about what about the uh, minorities that are not being acknowledged. Okay, well done. Mm -hmm. I hope more hot Indo is coming up. The mountaintop sex ban in central Java. You're watching Hot Indonesia from Jakarta. Here is hot topic number three, sex ban. It was part of local legend. Your wishes would come true if you had sex seven times at the tomb of Prince Samudra on the slopes of Mount Kamukas in Shragen near Samarang. The practice morphed into an active prostitution industry surprise, so the central Java governor recently said stop in the name of love. No, that's a song. Um, you know, I was going to say, it, I was like, really? But he hasn't been there until I know well. Uh, that's uh, why I kind of contributed to the problem. You know, an Australian <laughs> TV network raised the issue in a report, and that kind of prompted the, uh, you know, it's kind of a sensational. It's I think been it's, there um, for ages. You this know, is like the virginity, those, virginity yes, test for women issue. Silly, hard to believe that it's being done in this day and age. And I think kind of maybe they did it as a tourism thing. Now more people will do it. No, actually, what, a lot well, of They ban it, and people want to go and break yes. the ban, you know? You remember, oh my gosh, what was that? That was this movie about uh, Da Vinci Code, you know? How they have ritual of uh, having sex in, in the rituals, the, the Knights Templar. I don't think you need a ritual right? to encourage people to... To, to do that. But you know what's the no, funny but, thing? But some people, <laughs> well, funny unfortunately, thing is that people, I don't know how, but go some people there, really the believe people in that. The people who go there are just, you know, not just regular merchants who are seeking wealth and all that, but also government people. Yes, government that's very true. Oh, oh yes, you have, trying to get you have mayors. You have. So imagine if it's a police officer <laughs> got caught, are you a male police officer got caught in a prostitute there. That wouldn't that be that's funny? Kill two birds I guess they wouldn't go there with, you're wearing their uniform. Well, you know, it's it's something to honor tradition. I mean, I'm a believer in in following cultural or heritage, but it, it's not hard to imagine a persistent boyfriend, for example, saying, honey, let's go and uh, get rich tomorrow and, and do it on the mountain. And I just have yeah. to put this yeah, on but the Yeah, but you don't, uh, you don't engage in a, uh, you don't copulate with your uh, legal partner. Oh, that's right. That's it thing. has to be with someone. Uh, you meet there. You meet there. That's the reason why. Mm. You meet at the slope of the mountain. It's the first person that you meet. So you like I mean, I've heard, Are you serious? Seriously, yeah, I've heard all these tales all this all the time. Yeah, exactly. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, in those in, in the old days when you don't meet when they didn't meet uh, people, then they had sex with whatever you know all the living what beings do you mean, with that they ever, met. Whatever. What do you mean, like trees? Ass, she's talking about no, animals. No, I mean like animals. Okay, like now I'm having all this stuff. weird. Well, uh, that's giving people nightmares now. We're gonna that's be banned in Asia. That's the whole tales. I mean, like, oh come on. I'm we just telling you what I what I heard. You heard this growing up. This is a this. You heard this growing up as well. This this mountain. Yeah, there is, that's the reason why uh, all these prostitutes are flocking there. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, I was gonna say. This is becoming like it's it's becoming like a business tourism for and yeah. I'm sure it's still happening. I mean, they, it is still happening. Yeah. I mean, do you but want to check, Dalton? No, but Come the governor and said no, us. and I listened to the governor. Um, and on the record, on the record, <laughs> on the record, what? It is happening in my district. That's central. So again, no. So oh, that's, again, that's yours. Is my ah. district. Put your foot down, young lady. Well, <laughs> you know what? Come I on. think the governor is. But putting imagine foot down. the AIDS. Um, uh, prevalence but you know what? Yeah. There's a huge, there's a bigger issue than just this <laughs> one thing that's happening in my district because it's happening all over, and it's happening because of prostitution is still legal in Indonesia. I'm not saying that prostitution, prostitution is not, not illegal. illegal. It's not legal. It's, not it's legal. illegal. 
there's Maybe no you try to find the law there's only like one small well, well religion, religion should take care happen. of that anyway so let's move on okay <laughs> Right? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. It's, it's, religion. It's, it's, it's hold on. There's no no number. Okay. Hey, oh, it's okay. feedback time, and I'm sure we're going to hear about we have a this segment from a lot of people. Oh. Please let us know whether you like what you're hearing. <laughs> Sarah, <laughs> okay, wait, like Sarah with an H posted this on our Facebook page. Without you guys, honestly, I never have interest in any news. Well, that's what we like to hear. Thank you very much, oh. Sarah with an H. If you have any feedback on what you've heard or would like to suggest a topic for us to tackle, please email us at hotindo at the Indonesia channel.com or comment through our Indonesia channel Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram pages. I gotta like sign up for Instagram. Final words, Yeni. I read this uh, quote, which is, I think it's really nice, and I'd like to re-quote it, quote it here, to, which is, uh, be nice to people on your way up, because you meet them on your way down, uh -huh. by Jimmy Durante. Oh, what Jimmy goes up will come Jimmy down. Famous entertainer in the early 30s, four thirties and 40s. Yeah. Okay, final words, Sarah, and by the way, well, we'll talk about these cupcakes here. Go ahead. Yeah, well, well, I was about to say that. Obviously, you probably noticed I'm not wearing as much makeup as usual. Uh, I think it's just really concerning for me to see how some women actually literally go to the salon on their way to the mall. Um, and I think it's, I just want to spread the message out there that, well, this is how I look actually every day in, in Parliament. And you don't have to put on that much makeup. Or paint. Because research has been done that actually if you put half as much as you usually do, that's as much as people actually like you to put on. And you so. save half your makeup and budget. And it's all about inner beauty. It'll shine through. Hopefully mine will. But I have a lot of zits right economy now. Will suffer, yes. The economy will suffer. Yes. My final words. Um, you know, when it's tempting to cross the line in business or pleasure, that's when you've got to be the strongest. Because if you get something the wrong way, what you have is not worth the ethical price. Ooh. I think it's sweet vibes. And that is Hot Indonesia for mm, this week. Nice. I'm Sarah Yeni. I'm Dalton Talanaka. See you next time.